This week on Remodel Revolution Radio, we visit with a new friend, Andy Armstrong, with Fujitsu. We have a fantastic discussion about ductless air conditioning, thermostat controls, and how multi-generational families coexist under one roof. Let's listen in. My guest today, Mr. Andy Armstrong from Fujitsu. Andy is a uh, HVAC genius. He's the dude. He is the guy. How you doing, Andy? Uh, hey, yeah. I am doing great, and what a tremendous introduction. Thank you, Alex. Well, that's, you uh, deserve it for sure. You deserve it for sure. <laughs> well, I, I know I'm among greatness. I, I don't have uh, don't have your, your 40 years, but I do have 30 doing the HVAC thing. So uh, I'm well, happy to share what I do now. Keep trying. You'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but time, right? You know, um, I was talking to a friend of mine, and we were uh, reflecting back, and, and we're about the same age. We've been in business. He grew up in the AC business. His his, grand, his uh, dad and uncle started theirs back in the 60s. And uh, mm-hmm. it occurred to us that forced air and uh, air conditioning in homes really isn't a very old science. It's really kind of a new science still. Absolutely, it's uh, it's a very very uh, changing and dynamic world, and we've we've had this uh, evolution going from way back when we used to have the the coal stoker in the basement yeah. in uh, in the northern climates, and, right? And then uh, we we learned from that and decided maybe we can move the air around the house a little more effectively, and uh, figured out ways to do it more efficiently through the years. And well, just, just it, my past thirty years has been dynamic, and and you know and. The environment inside the house is what's changed. Uh, we started now, and particularly in the part of the country I'm in where we're dealing with heat. You're dealing with cold more than you are with heat. But up here where we're dealing with, down here, where we're dealing with heat and humidity, um, the, the, we started insulating houses, putting energy-efficient windows, all those things. We, we made the envelope of the house such so efficient that it meant that we had to deal with the interior environment. It's uh, it, it's the worst air that we breathe is most often right inside our house. That's uh, right. When you talk about uh, all the things that can be in there besides uh, carbon dioxide, which tends to build up in homes now, you've got carbon monoxide. If you're heating with gas or cooking with gas, you've got to deal with that. You've got VOCs. You've got bacteria. You've got viruses. You've got all sorts of stuff in that air. And we have not adopted good strategies to bring in fresh air in this country yet we've got some great solutions overseas that we're starting to bring to this country but uh it's something we haven't addressed near as well as we should in this country so what are they doing different overseas what they've done in uh overseas if you go to especially in northern europe they have broken tremendous new ground in air exchangers so they're able to take and we use them in this country more in the commercial markets but even in residential in europe they're bringing in outside air, uh, either very uh, when it's very hot, very cold, at a very high efficiency. So they're only losing 7, 10, 12 percent of the efficiency of the air that's going out the door. So, for example, if it's 105 in Dallas and you're exhausting 72 degree air, uh, this system, because it's so efficient at recovering that that uh, heat or the the, the cool, um, you're able to bring in back 76, 77 degree air. Wow. So it's much easier to bring in fresh air and not have that huge energy bill that goes with it. Well, there's been a lot of uh, of air replacement systems that I've seen, um, it, uh, ERV systems or ER, what do you call mm-hmm. whatever you call them. And, uh, there's HRVs and ERVs, so oh. combination you hear of. And so... My only concern I've ever had, I am uh, I really like passive, um, I like as much passivity as possible in a house where it's practical. Mm-hmm. And the issue that I've had, I wouldn't say an issue, but a concern that I've had about an ERV system or some of these systems I've seen where they take the air, it's kind of like a mini air conditioner. They, so they take the outside air, they recondition it, filter it, inject it back into the system as fresh air replacement usually um and that's all fine i'm fine with all that but my concern is always what happens if the power goes out or what happens if part of that system breaks down and you don't know it as the as the homeowner you don't know it i mean you don't know if it's working or not until something bad happens 
Yeah, certainly the uh, the power going out across the home is one situation, and we certainly have other ramifications there. Um, knowing that the milk milk goes bad is a pretty good clue that you might want to look at your uh, your power. But boy, when the, when that unit goes bad and you don't know it, you're you're right on target. And one thing we're doing so much better in the HVAC industry today, across the board, whether it be the Fujitsu products I sell or even the the more uh, common names you hear of in the traditional ducted systems, the carriers, the trains, the the Yorks. Uh, all all manufacturers are doing a better job of connecting uh, to the Internet of Things. So you can see on your phone that this device is working or not working. If it's a problem, it will it will alert it's you. It's a smarter device. It's a smarter device. It, it's talking. Yeah. It's talking to the to the owner, the consumer, the owner, whatever, however you want to put that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of like kind of like the little it. warning lights in your car. Exactly. Exactly, and it's uh, uh, set up now. We have options where we can tell your contractor that there's a problem, so they can they can take a step, or if you prefer, we can set it up so you'll find out as well. So, so it can it go a lot of flexibility. So it goes over it like Wi-Fi, or it contacts them through the internet and says, "Hey, this unit is having an issue." Exactly. Exactly. That's amazing. That's totally amazing. Yep. So we're just breaking into the technology and getting better all the time. We're uh, we're even talking to Alexa now, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so let's talk a little bit about the uh, Fujitsu ductless. Uh we we've been marketing the show as as the uh thermostat wars, which is uh you know, we have thermostat wars if you're married. <laughs> You know, thermostat <laughs> wars start with the male female uh part of the world and but as you've uh talked about in in the background that I was reading for for you you know there's a lot of gen- multi generational uh ness happening in homes and uh um, yeah, you're so tell us about how fujitsu's de- helping deal with that Sure. It, it, it's becoming a bigger issue. And for, for thousands of years, the generations lived together. And only really in the post-war America did we decide that everybody should have their own home. And we didn't have the, the kids coming back after college. And we didn't have the parents right. coming coming back home. And we're starting to realize that maybe that wasn't such a bad idea. Maybe that's a good way economically and uh, uh, just family unit-wise to live. So a lot of people are living that way. And as many as 30% of the homes in the U.S. have multi-generations living in them. So so at uh, Fujitsu, we have a couple of ideas. First of all, uh, we talked about it a minute ago, is just have a good thermostat that everybody can communicate with, whether it's talking to Alexa or Hey Google or Siri or talking to a nest and, and figuring out how to tie that in. A voice control. A voice controlled. Yeah, voice controlled or just, just good control that everybody mm-hmm. understands. Because if, if grandma's uh, living there and she doesn't know how to work the thermostat, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Because she has comfort needs and quite often she's there alone. And uh, thermostats have gotten a lot easier to use. Yeah. So uh, uh, making sure that you've got one that everybody can interface with is a great first step. But but then you get the battle. Once everybody knows how to use it, somebody likes it 77 and somebody else right. likes it 72. That's right. And you got your system bouncing back and forth, and that's no good. So so with Fujitsu, we have some pretty good options there, too. Uh, probably one of the best is to is to start thinking about zoning. And that can be ductless technology, which we think is the best for a lot of reasons. But you can also take a traditional ducted system and zone it pretty effectively so you can get everybody to have the temperature that they want in their space when they want it. Right. Right, and so the 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 um, you're you can have. I know that I've dealt with this with people that are um, in wheelchairs or people that are not mobile, where they have to have certain uh, comfort levels in uh, one small area, like a bedroom, bathroom, because they don't have circulation in their body if they're in a wheelchair, and they they they're always cold. And mm-hmm. and so you you don't want to keep the whole house at eighty degrees, but you might want to keep that bathroom and that bedroom super warm for that one person. Exactly, exactly. And ductless technology is a wonderful solution to do that. Uh, it, it's an easy fix. You can uh, you don't have to worry about all the duct work. You can just get it set up so that one unit is hanging on the wall, or we have them that go on the floorboard now, or it can go in a cassette in the ceiling, or even a, a small ducted unit just for that uh-huh. suite that they're living in. 
You can give them exactly the temperature, give them a remote control so it can be right next to their wheelchair all the time and and give them exactly the comfort and control that they want. Well, and some of the uses that I've used the ductless air system for over the years, I've used them, uh, some of your competitors for a long time. Uh, I've done airplane hangers where I had, where I did a man cave and airplane hanger and it had a, you know, Uh of course it was for a guy. (laughs) <laughs> and so there was a there was a bar and you know whatever in there and so we had it, it made that it was the perfect type of system for him it, we actually put two of them uh two air handlers off one compressor which was which was very interesting i've also done a lot of conversions where i've converted or built garages with a, maybe an art room or an office attached and, the, and that deckless air system is perfect for that uh, because you're not getting into all of the heavy duty ducting and things that you don't really need. Yeah, it, you're, you're right on target, Alex. And I, I uh, can tell you're doing things right because so often we hear um, uh, general contractors and homeowners say, "Well, we'll just we'll just extend the existing ductwork out to cover <laughs> <No>. that space." And, <laughs> and it was never designed to do that. And you're no. just creating creating potential for real problems with the rest of the house. Well, and, and you're you know these ductless systems have heat and air, and they oscillate. And so you can actually put a, this small unit. And what are they now? Twenty four sear. I mean, they're super super uh, efficient. Our most most efficient is thirty three. Thirty three. So uh, wow. One of the leaders in the industry. It yeah, we're, barely we're very costs proud of that. anything to run that. Yeah, you're just trickling energy through, and and to your point, you talked earlier about how tight we're making the homes. So we're we're seeing twenty five thousand square foot homes now heated and cooling cooled with uh, twenty four twenty twenty eight thousand BTUs. So yeah. you're you're able to really trickle energy into that system and, 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 to, keep your house and exactly to put the that into perspective it. to put that into perspective the 24,000 BTUs i put in cooktops that are 18,000 BTUs yeah exactly exactly <laughs> you know that's amazing that's amazing really yeah we we're building houses a lot better now and and because of that we can we can heat and cool differently than we ever have before and and really we need to so uh, can you put you, when you anytime you're doing a ductless system if you have multiple rooms let, let's say you have two or three rooms that you want to uh, uh uh heat and cool do you have to have a separate unit for each room but you can run it still on just one compressor that's a great question, Alex. We we have expanded a great deal over the past 10 years in that front. And you mentioned having two indoor units on the job. You did with one outdoor. Uh, now, with the traditional ducting mod, ductless model, you can go up to five indoor heads. I, I wanted to get into the efficiency and how, how you can manage multiple rooms with ductless air conditioning andy can you explain that to us yeah simply uh, uh simply put there's uh one unit outside and you've got multiple units inside either three four five or if you use the new variable refrigerant flow technology you can get up to nine wow. uh, units in a house in a bigger home uh and, and basically what we do is we are uh, uh, what I like to say is kind of like UPS. We're a BTU logistics company. So if you think about just putting as much heating and cooling as you need in any given room at any given time, that's what we're trying to do. And we do it very efficiently because with with refrigerant, you're using little uh, um, quarter inch or three eighths inch pipes to take the refrigerant to and from those rooms. With a ducted system, you're moving a whole bunch of air back and forth, which takes a lot of energy. So so what we do is just take the exact amount of refrigerant into that room, uh, put it through that unit on the wall or in the ceiling or uh, on the floorboard, and you can get that heat and cool exactly. In so the it's contained. It. It's all contained in the unit that's on the wall. You don't have all of the all the lines and all that. Crazy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's very yep. interesting. And the, yeah, the and outdoor then, units that I've used in the past seem like they were a lot smaller than a typical unit would be on a house. They're uh, we w- we could actually hang them on a wall if we needed to, or put them on a shelf, elevated on a wall. Or, yeah. Is that typical? Yeah, there's a, a different construction. So they're built with uh, horizontal discharge, meaning the fan blows out uh, as opposed to blowing up. 
So that configuration keeps the footprint smaller and you can keep it much closer to the house. So you have very tight clearance that you can put on a shelf right next to the house or a balcony or up on a roof very easily. Mm -hmm. And they're light and easy for a contractor to maneuver around. There's another benefit, uh, Alex, to to bringing all those uh, units into the house. We we live in big houses uh, in in this country, and it's not uncommon to see a three, four thousand square foot home. But then you talk to the people who live in it, and surprise, surprise, they live in about 700 square feet. That's right. So, That's right. so you have all these spaces that are heating and cooling, and uh, you don't need to. So with this technology, you can just shut those areas down to uh, keep it uh, uh, at the temperature. You don't freeze, you don't get too warm in them, but you can not worry about comfort as much and really save significantly on your energy. So, yes, 33 SEER is a great rating, but... If you're uh, not using it much at all, it gets even better. Well, and and if you're if you're if you have a multiple room system and you have these units in each room, you probably don't want to turn them off in rooms you're not using, but you probably want to just tone it up or down a little bit to kind of manage. You still want to manage the air and manage yep. the humidity, and um, that makes overall the whole system run more efficiently. Correct. Uh, absolutely. And as you get into the northern climate, you certainly want to keep it about freezing so you're not having any pipes freeze or right. anything like that. But just keeping that system running and, as you say, keeping the air moving, keeping the humidity out, that's going to make your uh, your your home a lot uh, nicer, a lot longer, because we all know the, the risk of mold and things that can go along with that. And nowadays, um, these are all operated off of... Um you're, you can operate it from your cell phone or your iPad, or you, you you don't have to have a thermostat in the room, right? Yeah, and, and what I would recommend there, and I think uh, uh, I've heard you say this before, it's always good to ask a lot of questions of your contractor. And yeah. This is one of those areas that chances are good he can get you exactly what you want, whether you want to be ask, ask, asking Alexa to cool it down in your house or you want to connect to a nest or you have some other solution, make sure you talk to your contractor first so he can find the right solution and make sure it's set up exactly how you want it because well, and, and, there are tons of options. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, the the, no the, the thing that, the thing that um, we're dealing with more and more right now uh, as a society is the older generation moving in with the younger generation. It seems to be happening more and more. I know uh, in my personal life, my mom's elderly and and it's a real struggle for all of us kids to take care of her because she wants to be in her apartment. She doesn't want to be mm-hmm. any. She wants to be. She still wants a little bit of her freedom, and she and she can still handle it. So, you have these multi generational. Um, you have these older people. Is what I'm trying to say, and they can't necessarily physically. Uh, my mom has uh, her eyesight's gone. And so to be able to control the air conditioning uh, with her, with audio, talking into mm-hmm. Alexa or whatever it is, uh, is is really outstanding. I mean, I think that that can make the, a huge difference in a person's life. Yeah, it, it does make a difference. And, and let's be honest, having a a uh, elderly parent come and live with you has a whole bunch of emotion and and uh, change of life things associated with it. So this is just one way you can take one part of the worry out right. of it, make sure they're comfortable all the time, and they have the autonomy to make their living space the comfort level they want. And that's that's what we're trying to do is just make it easy for the homeowner, the contractor, and the, the uh, elderly person to take care of their needs in the home. Andy, we really appreciate you coming on with us today. It's been really wonderful, very informative, and uh, I hope your products do really well. We're uh, very glad to be part of the show and keep up the good work. As a uh, as a DIY guy for a long time, it's always good to hear what you're doing out there. and uh, We can use the help, I can assure Thank you. Thank you so much, Andy. Have a wonderful weekend. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. What a great conversation with Andy Armstrong of Fujitsu. I sure hope you enjoyed this podcast. If so, make sure and follow us. And thanks for listening.